into all of the world and preach the gospel. Matthew recounts some of the final words of Jesus as instructions for believers to follow. We are blessed and honored at Sanctuary Church to follow those directives in diverse ways. This past year, the global and local outreach departments of the church have flourished and grown so much through prayer, action, and giving. We are excited to celebrate what the Lord has done through each one of you. Locally, we have extended our borders even more with our Conway Learning Center preschools with weekly chapels and quarterly events. In addition, many families have begun to attend Sanctuary Church from CLC either on Wednesdays, Sundays, or both. In 2018, our Sanctuary Church food pantry gave nearly 178,605 pounds of food to nearly 28,000 family members and helping nearly 8,000 families. This is an increase from 2017. So far in 2019, nearly 88,000 pounds of food have been distributed. We have also implemented a prayer team, which has been successful through increased frequency of people asking for prayer, praise reports for answered prayers, and genuine connection between volunteers and attendees. We have a new freezer and several new volunteers to assist in the pantry. Through our holiday outreaches, we had 210 Operation Christmas Child boxes donated and 54 children were blessed through our Angel Tree gift to drive. Additionally, we sponsored 38 children and three houses with gift cards to Walmart and McDonald's, as well as fun new items for the cottages at the Heart of Florida Youth Ranch. We partnered with Harbor House, a domestic violence shelter here in Orlando, for a Christmas kickoff celebration with 10 of the ladies from our Sanctuary Ladies Community Group. We also had five volunteers help at Up Orlando's Christmas Store, assisting needy families shop for gifts for the children. Through our prison ministry and chapels at Bridge of America, nearly 560 men have attended with 51 salvations and 30 recommitting their life to Christ. We love the ministry of the Heart of Florida Youth Ranch located in Ocala, Florida. Above and beyond supporting them each month, we facilitated a family barbecue there in February, and at Christmas, we sponsored 38 children and three houses with gift cards to Walmart and McDonald's, as well as fun new items for the cottages. We also donated nearly 1,000 pounds of food throughout the 2018 year. We have partnered with Acts of Love Uganda and Conway Learning Center to collect 400 pairs of shoes. During our Sanctuary Serves seasons, we have eaten local, blessed mothers with flowers and love, served in the pantry and at Barber Park, as well as invited our friends to church and to the fun events such as the Memorial Day Family Game Night. Additionally, we recently collected an overwhelming amount of clothes and hygiene items for Project Haiti. Globally, we are currently supporting seven missionaries and mission projects. Additionally, we have given above and beyond for special projects and needs in places like Ecuador and Colombia. We sent two teams to North Florida to help repair churches greatly damaged by Hurricane Michael. The church also collected necessary supplies to bring to the panhandle after Hurricane Michael. We have completed the repair of a pastor's home in Immokalee, Florida, recovering from Hurricane Irma. Our Missions Cafe has a new system in place and new volunteers who are enjoying serving there. In our recent Power Up VBX, Sanctuary Kids raised nearly $270 to purchase school supplies for our upcoming Back to School Bash happening in August 2019. From June 2018 to 2019's year to date, Sanctuary Church, you have given $137,000 to World and Home Missions, Benevolence, and Missions projects. We should be proud of the way our hearts and lives have aligned with Christ's directives to reach the lost for Him. We have truly impacted people from around the corner to around the world. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving, serving, and praying for our missionaries and the numerous projects we support both locally and globally. Let's continue to worship through all that we do as we fulfill the Great Commission in this coming year. Good morning, Sanctuary Church. Come on, let's stand. It's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Come on, let's put our hands together in worship.
We put our hope in your name, Jesus. Sing in honor, glory and power unto our God forever and ever. All of the honor, all of the praise is yours, yours forever.
Come on, shout that. Sing, it is so. Come on, this is for my African Caribbean nations this morning. Come on, just be free in Jesus to worship. Come on. Come on, let's sing it out. Amen, 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 amen. It is so. It is so. Amen, amen. Amen, 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 amen. It is so. Amen, 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 amen. It is so, it is so. We sing amen, 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 amen. It is so, it is so. For He has saved us, He has redeemed us, and He will hear us when we call. And when affliction come on the righteous, He will deliver us out of them all.
Welcome to Sanctuary Church, our brand new series, Christ and Cardio. <laughs> I'm back there just like. Oh man, the Lord is true, and these hips don't lie, because I'm. Praise God. Look at your neighbor, say, it is so, and you guys can have a seat. Praise God. Woo! Well, welcome to Sanctuary Church. It's the Lord's Day, and we're so glad that you're here today. We know that there's a tons of places you could be. It's summertime in Florida, but you are right here in the house of God, and we just want to say welcome. We are so glad you're here. And if you're here for the very first time, you picked a great day to be here. So we've been talking about rediscovering the church and today we're going to be talking about what the church does outside of these four walls because it's Mission Sunday. And this is a church on a mission. This is a, support, a church that supports and believes in missions. And I'm very excited, very excited to hear all the great things God is doing to be encouraged and motivated. You can't, you can't feel, help but be excited when you walk in here and you see these missionaries, see all these displays, what we're doing around the corner and around the world. What an absolute privilege to serve the world, to serve the kingdom of God. Amen. Can we give God praise this morning? And welcome to all of our very special guests. You'll get to hear a little bit more from them later on, but we're so glad that you guys are here. Thank you. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for everything that you do. Well, if you are new here today, we want to say welcome. There's a card in the seat back in front of you. It looks just like this. It says, I'm new here. And if you are new here, grab an I'm new here card. At some point today, just flip it over and fill it out. Uh, after service, if you want to bring it to our Guest Connect area, it's right out those doors and just, just a little bit to the right. We'd love to get to know you and put a free gift in your hand. Who doesn't love free stuff, right? So we'll hook you up with some free stuff, and it'll just be a great time to, to serve you a little bit. But we are so honored that you would be here. It's a very special, very important day, and um, we're just ready to look forward to what God has today. Amen? Amen. Let's take a, look, a quick look at the announcements and see some ways that you can get connected with what's going on here at Sanctuary Church. Check this out. Thank you for worshiping with us today here at Sanctuary Church. Our heart is to see everyone here believe, belong, and become who God has created us to be. Under the leftmost seat in front of you is the Connect Book. Take a moment to sign in, share with us any prayer needs you might have, and pass it along to the person on your right. It's one of the ways you can help us better serve you. Thanks for filling out the Connect Book. Good morning, my name is Sabrina, and this is what's happening at Sanctuary Church. Today, Sanctuary Church welcomes our missionaries from around the world who are with us for our Mission Sunday. Let's join together as we see what God is doing through Sanctuary, both around the corner and around the world. This July, our midweek groups will be coming together in the main sanctuary on Wednesday nights for summer group up. We'll have some fun icebreakers, a rotation of fascinating teachers, and thought-provoking small group time. This is one of our favorite events. Plus, we will have Sanctuary Kids and the Revolution Youth, so plan to be with us Wednesdays starting in July. July 3rd is our first Wednesday gathering where all of our groups and members come together for a special out-of-the-box event. We'll be celebrating family and freedom this first Wednesday at our Ice Cream Social. Join us as we share in a refreshing bowl of ice cream or two. Families are also invited to participate in our Family Dodgeball Tournament for fun and prizes. It's all happening this Wednesday, July 3rd, only at Sanctuary Church. Sanctuary is a great place to call home and a great family to call your own. On Sunday, July 21st, we would like to invite all those who would like to become official members to join us for Membership Sunday. If you're interested in taking the next step and belonging to this great family, sign up at guest services or at sanctuarysignup.com. One of our church's core values is we want to see everyone believe, belong, and become all they can be in Christ. That process begins with Growth Track, an interactive luncheon and learning experience. This is your first step in your Sanctuary Church journey. Our next Growth Track is coming up on Sunday, July 14th after service. If you're new to the Sanctuary community or you simply want to rediscover your church, sign up today at SanctuarySignUp.com. Refuge, our ministry to women, is preparing for their next big event. They'll be hosting a breakfast on the 27th to get women excited and involved in making this Refuge event even bigger and better than the first one. Check your bulletin for more information on how you can be a part of Refuge Women's Breakfast Event. Starting next Sunday and running the month of July, we'll be collecting school supplies for our Back to School Bash Backpack Giveaway happening August 3rd. 
grab a supply list, and let's gear up to help kids in our local community get ready for school. We're so glad you're here. If it's your first time with us today, welcome. Take a moment to grab an I'm New Here card from the seat back in front of you. Then flip it over, fill it out, and bring it to our Guest Connect for a complimentary gift. It's our way of saying thanks for being with us today. For all this and more, check your bulletins or follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Once again, we're so glad you're with us today. Join me as we hear from our missionaries as they share words of gratitude for our church. Every day at the Heart of Florida Youth Ranch, we pray that God will grant us shining moments in the lives of the children we serve. And every day, we get to see them accomplish things they can have never done before. From the moment we say yes to a child, they become your children too. You make these moments possible with your support. We cannot thank you enough and hope that you enjoy the pictures of our kids. From Joanne and I, as well as everyone at the ranch, thank you, Sanctuary Church. Hey, Dana Holloman here, coming to you from Ireland with a huge thank you to Sanctuary Church. Without you, it wouldn't be possible for me to be here and um, the ministry that is going on, the, the youth and Wake Up Ireland and so many things that are happening um, around Ireland and the nation. I just want to extend a huge, huge thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for all your prayers. Thank you for all your financial support. Thank you for just letting me be a part of Sanctuary Church. Thank you and God bless. Hi there. I'm Dr. Fred Tok, Chief of Operation for People for Care and Learning. I just want to come in and thank Pastors John and Lori and everyone at Sanctuary Church for your continued support in our endeavor to break the cycle of poverty around the world. I just want to thank you all and God bless you all. Thank you. Greetings, Pastor and Church family. This is Chris and Kathy Swift from Western Europe, your missionaries. Thank you for your prayers and support. We are so excited that very soon we'll get to see you and share with you what God has done in this last season. The altars are full of people seeking salvation and a deeper walk with God. And many, their minds have been broken into old, from old ways into new ways according to the Spirit of God. God is doing a new thing in the 11 countries of Western Europe. We're excited, and we'll see you soon. Have a great day. God bless you. Bye. Sanctuary Church friends, you most definitely deserve a thumbs up from us and the children at the Faces Ministry. Thanks to you, again this year, we're able to have several projects dedicated to the elimination of child labor in Ecuador. As Aaron and her held up Moses' arms in the battle against the Amaleks, you have come alongside us and help us in winning the battle against child labor. God bless you abundantly, and we love you. Thanks. Hello, St. Jesus Church. I am Pastor Vargas Thomas, deeply involved in the ministry to reach with the love of Christ. Today, one of our leaders from India, Pastor James Samuel, with me, he will share a few things with you. Pastor James Samuel. Hi, I'm Pastor James Samuel from India, working with Inhim Ministry. India have a 29 state, and out of 29, we were able to reach 13 states with the love of Christ. That is because of your prayer and support. Continuously to pray for us. May the God bless you. Thank you. Hola, mis queridos hermanos. Dios los bendiga. Dios los bendiga, pastores, líderes, joy. Gracias por todo lo que nos han ayudado durante este tiempo. Dios los bendiga. Estamos desde Cota, Colombia. Ministerio Internacional Gire. Dios los bendiga y gracias. Amen. Amen. Can we put our hands together for what God is doing? It's so exciting. You know, as your missions and outreach pastor, I take great pride and great excitement in being in that in-between, in between all of those missionaries and the missions projects that we support, and then all of you. And we get to partner together to see and to be part of what God is doing, not just from around the corner to around the world as well. Can we give one more hand clap of praise? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for what God's doing. 
You know, we partner with projects around the corner and right here in our local community in so many different ways. And one of the ways that we partner with our missionaries is we go to be with our missionaries. Now in 2020, I know we're in 2019, but in 2020, mark your calendars. 2020, we're gonna be heading to Ecuador to be with Dan and Teresa Susong on a great missions trip. You are invited to come and be part of the ministry that they're doing there. They are part of the, the FACES ministry. So they combat child labor. So we're gonna be hands-on in the ministry that's happening there. We're also gonna be able to partner and be with the indigenous people of Ecuador and Quito to be in the mountainous regions, to connect with them, to share and show the love of God with them. So we would love for you to, to begin to pray and ask God, God, what would you want me to do to be part of this trip? We have a table in the Missions Cafe that says, I'm interested. So if you're saying, you know, I'm not sure if I want to go, but I would love more information. I would love to make sure that I know when that meeting is going to happen because I want to give or I want to go or I want to pray for those people that are going to be going. Make sure you stop by there after service and sign Sign your name up, as well as go and meet all of our missionaries, both local and global that are here. Meet with them, get some information, and commit to pray for what God is doing through them and through each and every one of you. Amen? Amen. Now, uh, you might have heard at the beginning of the announcement video, but we give so much from our church. You give so much um, to the world, not only through your time and your effort, but also through our gifts. This year, June to June, because that's kind of our fiscal year for missions, Sanctuary, had, Sanctuary Church has given close to $137,000 to missions projects, both here locally and globally. Yes, that's an amazing number. And that happens through our ties and our givings, through our worship, through our obedience. Because when we're obedient, God takes that and uses it in ways that we can never, ever even imagine. God's using that to help the poor in, in, in our community. God's using that to reach children in Ecuador. God's using that to partner and provide for, for pastors that are in India. God's using that to help reach Western Europe who's full of agnosticism. God's using that to reach project after project and person after person, and we're doing that together as a sanctuary church and as a family. So today as we worship in our tithe and our giving, know that your money, that your hard work is not just going, I don't know, to do this and that. It's going for big things. It's going for eternal things. It's going for things that matter. And so today as we prepare to give, just know, be excited to know that God is using your gift and your hard work for great things. Let's pray together. If you're on the leftmost seat of your row, if you you can um, scoop down, pick up the, bega, the bucket, and then after I pray, we're gonna, you can pass that and your ushers will be happy to collect. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for who you are. God, thank you for the great things that you're doing through Sanctuary Church. God, thank you for the ways that you're taking our, our penny, our dollar, our $10 or more, and doing great things for the kingdom of God. God, thank you, Lord, that we can only imagine the ways that you're stretching that dollar for, for, to reach the kingdom um, of God. We love you. We thank you. Bless our missionaries. Bless our church today. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, today is all about saying yes to going into the world to advance the kingdom of God. So can we just stand one more time today? We're going to enter into this time of worship. But we are nothing without the Holy Spirit. So we're just gonna sing this song that says, fill me up. So before we even do that, can we just lift our hands all over this place? Oh, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you. Come on, just begin to sing. Fill me up, God, fill me up, God. And you provide the fire. And I'll provide the sacrifice And you provide the spirit And I will open up inside Fill me up, God Fill me up, God Fill me up, God
God, fill me up. Oh, sing, fill me up, God. this morning by the power of your spirit by the power of your spirit and I give myself away I give myself away so you I give myself away Everything I am I give to you I give myself away So you Sing I give myself away I give myself away So you This be the cry of our heart I give myself away. Everything we are, we give. I give myself away. So you can. So here I am. And here I am.
Father, let the joy of the Lord just overcome each and every one of us. God, right now, Father, there, there are those that are struggling, those that are in a, a state of anxiety, a state of worry, a state of question, a state of uncertainty, Father, even a state of sadness. And right now, Father, your word promises that in your presence is fullness of joy and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. God, right here in your presence, God, let peace rest upon your people. Let the anointing, God, touch your people. Let deliverance come to your people, Father. And let the joy of the Lord, God, be the anthem of every single person in this place, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, and to God be the glory. If you believe that and receive it, give him praise this morning. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may, be, you may be seated in his presence. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Let's not forget that in our, our moments of uh, difficulty, our moments of what uh, sometimes are really moments of desperation, we're just wondering, God, am I ever going to get through this um, situation? Have you ever been in, in, a, uh, in the cruidity of the term, have you ever been in what we call a funk? Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know, God brings us out of funks, amen. And you know the quickest way to get out of those things is to praise your way out, just beginning to rejoice and give thanksgiving to God anyway. Sometimes those things will take us on a pathway that is a dead-end pathway of destruction. They'll take us to places that bridges are out and that no blessing flows. But, but when we learn to just worship God in the midst of all of that, when we learn to just like Job of old say, you know what, the Lord gives and the Lord taketh away, but blessed be the name of the Lord God, amen. You know, there's just nothing like that. You know, he said, in his presence is fullness of joy. I'm going to tell you what does not attract the presence of God. Complaining, worry, anxiety, fear. Fear is very repelling. But when we walk in faith and love and the assurance of the word of God, uh, it doesn't matter what our eyes see because the eyes of our spirit see beyond the natural of what we're experiencing. 
And out of that, he said, and this Psalm 1611, out of that and at thy right hand are pleasures evermore. What's at the right hand of God? Jesus Christ, amen. So he's saying, and through Jesus Christ, we find all of our pleasure, all of our prosperity, all of the reassurance and all the confidence that we need in our life to live the everyday. There are those things we're looking forward, forward to and believe in God for. But honestly, I need faith for the everyday of my life as well, amen. I need faith when uh, things kind of turn sorrow, the clouds come over, and it just seems like there's a, uh, a difficult storm brewing. We need that faith that says, you know what, Jesus has this thing in our life. Amen. One more time, if you believe that, give God glory and uh, praise uh, in this place. Amen. Um, I'm looking forward to bringing the word this morning. Uh, we're still talking about, just started last week, rediscovering the church, and this morning we just, uh, I wanted to tie it to this missions theme, this important day that uh, uh, we deemed as Mission Sunday. And so we're coming out of James, if you want to turn there, James, the second chapter. I'm going to read out of the um, NIV Bible. And uh, I think I'm going to read the first, uh, or verses 14 through 17 here in just a minute. Um, but in that, we just titled this again, More Than a Feeling. We need to, as a church and as a people and as individuals, um, we need to get beyond um, observation into full obedience. We need to get into a place to where we, we get beyond the, uh, the spectator side of Christianity and get in as a participator and get involved. So this message is today, it's going to confirm to many what you're doing, that it is in God's will, but it's also going to bring conviction in our life to what God wants to do through our lives. Some of you, you're not really involved yet. Some of you aren't really giving yet and, and faithful in these areas. And so we pray the Holy Spirit will speak to your life uh, and my life as well. But before we do, as you turn there, uh, I just want to make some beautiful acknowledgments. You know, I was thinking this morning that uh, those that we support, our missionaries, both local and global, um, they're really people that are friends of mine, people that we have relationships. Some of them go back 16, uh, 17 years, several churches back with uh, Lori and I. But if I could, let me mention, first of all, uh, when I mention your, your name or ministry, just please stand. Our ministries or missionaries from around the globe that are present this morning, Dan uh, and Teresa Susong, Teresa is not able to be here, and Dan just stepped out to do a ministry over the children's church. They do the faces ministry. Uh, Varghese Thomas with New Hope Ministries um, in India. He and uh, James and Jacob, all of you stand today. Amen. And um, just, just can stay standing. Uh, it, you, you deserve that. Uh, um, Christian, uh, Chris and Kathy Swift uh, from Western Europe. We've known them for, uh, man, uh, 18 years. We appreciate them. Uh, so much uh, in what they're doing. Some of our missionaries couldn't be here, John, Dr. John and Joanne Sweet with Heart of Florida. Uh, he's having a, a detached retina problems, so he's having eye surgery. Pastor Rosalba Perez, you've seen Dana Holloman and uh, uh, Fred Toke over uh, People for Care and Learning. You know, that's a great ministry over in Columbia, uh, whereby uh, over the years, we've been a big part of helping to build a, a city for really a, just a, a city for the poor and the needy and uh, uh, those that are greatly struggling. And uh, in Cambodia, what am I missing? I said Colombia, didn't I? You know I meant Cambodia. That's, that's slang for Cambodia. So uh, in Cambodia, thank you, darling, and that's why I'm so blessed. Um, but in, uh, in Cambodia, we were a big part of um, building this city. They were in cardboard boxes. I was over there and uh, seeing some of this. And I mean, pouring concrete, building walls, and, and giving them a place to live. In Cambodia, they, you weren't allowed to go in and have a church and, and preach the gospel and do the things that we would want to do. But because of the years of committed ministry and service, they've just opened the door for Church of God World Missions to start churches there, and we just sent one of our friends uh, from the Plant City Church of God, he and his wife, they're going over there to be over in ministry and to plant a church, so uh, we're going to be supporting them as well and what they're doing, so great things right there. Locally, from our, 
our local church here in the ministries of um, Crystal and Friday, um, whatever their last name is, Semiju, <laughs> and Acts of Love, Uganda, and uh, so much what they're doing. Let me just say something real quick here with them. Um, he's from Uganda, and how many ever watch Amazing Race? I was watching it the other day, and where he's from is where they were at. I came in the next day and mentioned it to him. He said, yeah, that's my hometown and all these neat things. And I said, oh, that's awesome. Wonderful place for you to live. Um, <laughs> it's just, but, but anyway, they're doing a great job. They're getting ready in the next few years to go back to uh, Uganda and live there and lead that ministry, Acts of Love, on a more permanent basis. So I really appreciate what they're doing. Larry and Brenda, Brenda Nicholson in the Sanctuary Food Pantry. Uh, Larry and Brenda, where are you at? There you are. There you are. I mean, you know, what, what's a little thing like approximately 200,000 pounds of food to, to approximately 28,000 people, 8,000 different families a year? What, what's a little thing like that in missions, right? One more time, let them know and their leadership how much we appreciate them. Um, Ann and Kathleen Lee, they're doing Awakening the Nations, if they would stand, yeah. Um, see, and, and I love the diversity in, in the missions of what we're doing. Uh, they're on the radio uh, from all over the, the, the nation, if not the world, uh, reaching all the way into San Francisco. Didn't you just start in San Francisco? So some great things there. And they're hitting some really tough subjects, really dealing with millennials and trying to open their eyes to the gospel of Jesus Christ, but even more so the love of God in helping them to let go of, of those bondages in their life to take hold of the freedom that God gives. So thank you, Ann and Kathleen, for uh, what you're doing. And then uh, our own uh, Hafiz Ali, who is in... Uh, England this morning, he and his wife, uh, they have started Grace Villa that um, is in uh, Trinidad doing a tre tremendous job. They're in the middle of building there, and so I appreciate everything they do. They may be watching online, so hello to them, but would you let them know how much we appreciate uh, what they're doing? Amen and amen and amen. Stand with me if you would. Let's get into the Word of God, and uh, let's, let's move forward together in faith. Um, so we're going we're gonna to look at this more than a feeling. James is, is taking this, um, th this setting here of discussion, and it's not faith against, he's not pitting faith against works. He's saying that there, there is redemption faith, redemptive faith, but out of redemptive faith, there is a work that comes forward. You can see faith. Faith isn't uh, this intangible. There's a tangibility to faith. And uh, if faith is real then there should be an action behind it. Yes. Is it ringing or is it me? So we all have a ringing in our ear this morning. I'm going to pray, God, in Jesus' name, healing, come. <laughs> oh, what beautiful coincidences. But anyway, no. So um, God coincidences, um, God incidents. Uh, let's read. Uh, the NIV, I'm going to read 14 and 17, and we're going to talk more about the whole of, of that chapter. Uh, what a rhetorical question, talking about faith. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? That word deeds is a neat word. It means a conscious or unconscious uh, or intentional actions about what we do. Uh, can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If uh, one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and be well fed, but does nothing in their physical bodies, uh, physical needs, what good is that? In the same way, faith by itself, it, uh, if it is not accompanied by an action, is dead. Let me go ahead and read verse 18. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds and what I do. Let's pray. Father, uh, we are so thankful for today because really it's just 
more than anything the day you have made. Now, God, in your creative plan, let us just flow in the word of God. Let us be encouraged. Let us be convicted. Let us be confirmed by what the word says to us this morning, that the anointing just speak both from the pulpit all the way through all of our hearts, even those online. We bless not only Sanctuary Church, but every church in our community that names the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For in his name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you as you are seated this morning. So as we, we look at this, this Sunday, we recognize that uh, this is Mission Sunday. So we have this mandate from the Master to share the gospel locally and globally. Jesus said in, in John 17, 18, in the same way that you have given me a mission as he's praying to the Father in the world, I give them a mission in the world. In John 14, 12, he said, the works that I do shall you do also because I go unto the Father. Nothing's changed from when Christ came to when Christ will yet return in what his plan is to come to seek and to save the lost. That is the, the goal, the local and the global goal, and that is to share the gospel. In Mark 16 and uh, 15, Christ said, go everywhere in the world and tell the good news to everyone. It is the great commission. And that commission should be our mission. It should be our mandate to what we do. Now, not everybody can go globally, but we can also, uh, we can go locally. But we also can fund the missions that are very specific, that are going to areas. And as I look at our missions uh, program and our missionaries, we have some very targeted areas that most of us will probably never go to these places or be able to reach on our particular uh, area of gifts and skills that God has given us. But we can reach them and we can impact their life by simply saying, yes, I support that mission. I want to pray for that missionary and I want to be involved, but not only in missions, but in the mandate of what God calls us to do as Christians here in the everyday of our life, that we simply don't have faith um, in, in word, but we have faith in deed. But we can see, you can see what is actually going on. Christianity is very tangible. Christianity is not for um, people to simply debate scripture in some way. I have people all the time that come to me and want to challenge different things that we believe. Just in the recent weeks, I had a guy that was wanting to challenge me about some of the things and the ways that I believe. I'll go so far with that, and then I cut it off. I'm not here to debate with you. I'm here to demonstrate through both the fruit of the Spirit and the actions and deeds of my life and lifestyle what Christianity is all about. I don't prove Christianity through my words, amen. I proclaim it through my actions and my deeds. And Christ sees and knows the changed heart that came when I accepted Jesus Christ. So if somebody looks at me, I don't really need to say I'm a Christian as much as I proclaim it out of my life, amen. And that's what really rediscovering the church is all about. It's rediscovering not a place that we show up. That's a good thing. But it's rediscovering the proclamation and the doing of of our life as Christianity. That's what the true church is all about. And we need to rediscover that. Can I get an amen? Come on, give him praise this morning. We had talked about last week, you know, we, we had to acknowledge some of the failures of, of the church in days gone by. We had to acknowledge. I, I, uh, I was very heavy about that, but I needed to do that so that we could then move into but God, amen, and his glorious favor is upon us and that no matter how difficult uh, things are and how ragtag we may become or appear, that ultimately we are the vehicle by which God is going to reach the lost at whatever cost. And so out of that, God is pouring out his spirit and his grace upon people and upon his church so that we live a life whereby through the fruit of the spirit, we are sharing the life of Jesus Christ in everything we do. So James says that, it is your work that evidences your witness. We say, I am this, I am that. And James says, well, if you are a good Christian and if you are faithful and if you are committed, then there should be something tangible. There should be something real. It's more than a feeling. It's more than a proclamation. It's more than a statement. You say, well, you know, Pastor, I've been going to church for for 30, 40, 50 years upward. I think that's a really good thing that you've been going to church, but how recent have you been to church? <laughs> Get the homonym, been to church. Okay, you know, so 
I mean, have you been to church? Are you the church? Are you demonstrating truly what faith in Christianity is all about? So James gives us some principles. I may or may not get through all of them that I've laid out, but I want to get, get going in those principles. And I want to talk to you about how that this thing is more than a feeling. Church is more than just talking about it. Church is a doing. So it's more than a feeling. It's more than, first and foremost, it's more than an empty confession. Go back to what James said in verse 14. He said, what good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but doesn't have deeds? Can such faith save or benefit him? You know, anybody can make a claim. Anybody can just say something. A claim doesn't produce a change. I can, I can claim a lot of things in my life, but am I living that, and is it a reality that people have evidence in my life that those particular things are true. And what he's actually saying, he's saying, listen, uh, there is nothing about a claim that demonstrates anything in our life. What he's talking about is he's saying, listen, that people can give all the phrases they want. I hear all kinds of things today, and people make all kinds of spiritual claims, and people are claiming to be a Christian. In fact, Gallup a few years ago said that 80% of the United States of America, people claim to be Christians. But only 12% ever go to church and faithfully follow and serve God. So well, I don't have to go to this organized religion. I don't have to do it. But here's what I know. That when you're a member of the family of God and that you have a faith and, a, and a, there's a consciousness about you that you want to be around other believers, that you want to be around the family, that you want to be around an organized way that God created in, in Christ, so that you can be in a way that we can, out of the synergy of our faith, we can make a difference and an impact. You see, that's what we're doing with missions. We are coming together and saying, all right, you are the head of the spear, but we are the force behind that, and the greatest strength is the spirit working in us. So synergistically, we're going to work together, and we're going to demonstrate that out of this claim, something is going to take place. You see... Christianity is not something we just say, but it's a lifestyle of, uh, that happens in our life. Today we tend to, to, to say, you know, uh, the moment somebody says I'm a Christian, we tend to say, oh, that's cool. You know, you'll be watching on TV and a, you know, a football player catches a pass, gets in the end zone, he pauses for a minute, you know. Oh, did you know that so-and-so is a Christian? You mean because he... We'll be driving down the road. It's happened to me. We're driving down the road just the other day. And somebody had a, a little fish with a cross in it. And, and just, you know, kind of jokingly, Lori looked at him and said, watch out, they're Christians. <laughs> and then she looked and said to some of her family, she said, that's why John didn't put a cross on, or a, uh, a fish on the back of his, you know, because Christians don't break the law while they're driving in their vehicles. It's... Uh, <laughs> Isn't this a nice setting? <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. So it's, it's more than talk. It's, it's an involved faith. It's, it's more than a little fish or follow me to sanctuary church on your bumper sticker. It, it's, it's a lot more than that. It's not those who profess Christianity. It's those who possess Christianity. It's not what you say about you that matters. It's what you actually do. You see, Christ said you'll, you'll know them by their fruits, but you go, you go on and he says that in uh, Matthew 7, 21, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of, of heaven. So it's not just saying the things. It's not just some sort of bump, bumper sticker. It's actually doing those things in our life. True faith produces a change in a person's life because he goes on in Matthew 7, 21, he says, it's not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, that will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of the Father. Now, now we're going somewhere. Who is it that enters in? Not those that just make a proclamation, but those out of that proclamation, there is a lifestyle change that they then begin to follow in faith and they begin to follow in obedience. Back up one, one passage in Matthew 7, 20. He said, you shall know them by their fruits. Fruits, that's deeds, character, actions. It is a byproduct of an of an outward which comes from the inward experience. It's saying something happened on the inside 
and to know what happened on the inside, you can see it on the outside, amen? You, you know there's a demonstration of an inward work, that word no, epino, epinosis. It, it means to discover, to come to knowledge, to see clearly what has happened. So he said, you will see clearly by their fruits, by the demonstration of outwardly what has happened inwardly in their lives, what has taken place. And he's talking about, I think, three simple things. He's talking about our attitude. He's talking about our actions. He's talking about our affections. He's talking about how, how we express ourselves every day, how, how we interact with other people. That's about our attitude. You know, when people say things and how we respond to them, and when things come across our lives and intersect us, how we respond demonstrates who we really are in Christ. Our actions, the everyday. Well, I, I'm a Christian, but uh, I, don't, I don't really... I, I don't believe the Bible says that. <laughs> I don't think God really cares if you believe that's what the Bible says. It's what the Bible says about a particular subject. That's all that matters, right? And then out of that, it is our obedience to what the word says in our life. And what happens is when it intersects our life in an area that we are not living to the standard of the word of God, we have one of two choices. We could just simply push away and say, that's not for me. That'd be the wrong thing. Or we can say, God, help me to change. Uh, there can be a spirit of repentance that there comes. So there's an action that takes place. Let me give you what Paul says about that action in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So he's saying there should be an expectancy of newness in your life. People say, you know, I've received Christ. Well, all right, in word you have, but there should be some deeds that ultimately follow. There should be some fruit that comes out of your life. There should be the change that what you used to do, you do no more. What you never did, you've started doing now, amen? You've come to a place and say, I'm setting all this stuff down by the power of the Spirit the word and the blood, but I'm going to start picking some things up. So it's not just the cancellation of old deeds, but it's starting new deeds which become habits that are formed in our life. Our thoughts become our actions. Our actions become our habits. Our habits become our lifestyle. Our lifestyle then glorifies our Father. Come on, if you believe that, give him praise in this place. Our belief determines our behavior. If you really have faith, you'll see what is going on. Secondly, it's more than a feeling. It's more than a false compassion. He goes on in, in verses 15 through 17, and he talks about how that faith should be seen in our uh, interaction and relationships with other people. You know, it's not a monistic type of lifestyle where we just simply get away and we say, you know, uh, I'm just going to be alone with God for the rest of my life. No, I want to be very careful here. Because I don't want to take away from those that have made tremendous sacrifices in these areas. But I'm just going to tell you, in understanding Scripture, God did not cre uh, create you and I to ultimately be so alone that we can have no effect on the world. Amen? How are we going to be salt and light? How are we going to be transformative to a world? How are we going to reach those? It's not that God's saying, okay, I'm going to cherry pick all you. I'm going to set you over here. I'm going to keep you. I'm going to protect you. And to hell with the rest of them. No, I mean that in a literal sense. I don't mean that in some sort of euphemism. I'm saying that God doesn't say you go to hell and the rest of you, you just hold on because I'm coming, amen. And you just, you just encourage one another. When we come together in this thing, this, this collective group that we do call church, uh, it's not that we just have holy huddles, but there's a time, you know, you, you ever watch football, they get in their huddle, and when they're, when they're all ready, break. Okay, for the three of you that, that watch football, that's what happens. <laughs> break. And what they do is they come out of that huddle, and they line up, and they get ready for a great event that's about to happen. When we come out of church, we ought to say, Break. And we ought to head out into the world and we should say, I'm going to demonstrate my faith this week. 
I'm going to live for Jesus Christ. I'm going to give to the things of the kingdom of God. I'm going to help somebody. I'm going to be transformative to the world that is around me. They are going to know that Christ is working on the inside of my life by the outside of what they see. Can I get an amen? <laughs> it's recognizing other people's needs. In Matthew 9, 35 and following, the Bible said Jesus went around the cities and the villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Listen to this. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. Let me tell you, we cannot blind ourselves to the needs of this world. Getting off and staying in holy huddles by ourselves. We're not going to see the needs of the world. Jesus came to this earth. He moved among the people. He got into the difficult areas. He got into the questionable areas. He was called things that in part he was. You know, a gluttonous man, a wine-bibber, and a friend of sinners. I don't see any gluttonous man there. I don't see any wine-bibber there. But what I do see is a friend of sinners. I do see somebody that came, that came out of heaven and out of glory and came down not to just look down his nose at us, but to look to us, to lift us up to heaven, to get among us. The Bible said that the common folk heard him gladly and they rejoiced because he got around the people. Church, we need to get out and we need to see the needs that are around us. We need to recognize there is a brokenness uh, uh, on our jobs. There is a brokenness in our communities. There is a brokenness in Orlando. There is a brokenness around this country. And I'm here to tell you, there is a brokenness around this world. But if we'll get beyond ourselves and begin to say, God, help me to see this world as you see it, we can move beyond simple, false compassion and into making a difference into a hurting and broken world. It's responding to other people's needs. He was moved with compassion to help. What did he say do at the end of that verse? He said, pray that the Lord of the harvest would send laborers. I'm going to tell you why I think he said that. It's twofold. It was to invoke God into the situation. John Wesley said, God does nothing but an, an answer to prayer. That being the case... That means we need to see the situation and we need to begin to pray about it. We need to pray that it would invoke God's hand and God's blessing into that situation. But I think it also, when he was telling them to pray about it, prayer also not only speaks God's hand into the situation, it also moves our heart into the situation. So it not only invokes, it involves. Because you can't pray about the brokenness of the world so long that the Spirit of God won't convict you about doing something. Amen? That's why one of the, go ahead and give God praise. Just a side note, that's one of the reasons that in Matthew 5, Jesus tells us to pray for those who have despitefully used us, those that have done us wrong, because he knows that it'll not only speak to their life by the Holy Spirit, but the greatest thing, it's going to speak to your life to stop hating him. It's going to speak to your life to stop being angry with them. And the more that you pray about it, the more that you want God's will to be done. And when we pray about missions and the harder we pray for, for those that are lost around the world, the hurting, the broken, the downtrodden, the desperate, and, and the difficult, the more that we pray, the more that we begin to hear the Holy Spirit says, and this is what I want you to do about the situation. So it is out of the heart of God, he comes into our life and moves our life till our hands become his hands extended. And it all begins with praying about the situation, responding to the situation and realize that as a part of God's family, we should be praying for one another. Yes, praying for the lost. But I'm telling you, one of the great things we need to do for our missionaries is we need to pray for them. My God in heaven, they are in difficult places all over the world, challenging places. There are places around the world that Christians are, are being martyred and, and Christians are, are being persecuted. We need to understand that it is out of prayer that God's hand moves upon their life. You know, I'm sitting here thinking about Ann and Kathleen Lee. I mean, they're facing devils every single day because on the radio station and on what they do, there is an interactive level where they, they have to talk to these people or they get to talk to these people. And out of that, you need to understand these aren't a bunch of just, just dummies that are airheads. These are some very intelligent people that are 
coming with some really, really important questions and they need to hear answers that are laden in the anointing of the Holy Spirit, not simply enticing words of man's wisdom, of the intellect, thereby where we learned how to speak eloquently, but that we are responding in the anointing of the Holy Spirit, which will destroy those yokes and break those arguments until they can see Jesus Christ, the giver of life. Come on, give him praise. This morning, it's being generous and giving to others' needs. It's, it's releasing our resources. It's saying what really the theme of, of this mission service is about. It's saying yes to people. You know, so often we go through life and we see a problem. We turn our head, you know, like somebody's standing, we'll work for food. Hey, honey, is this our exit? You know, we, we start looking that way. And uh, every once in a while, I mean, they're, they're, we'll work, standing at your window, we'll work for food. Um, you know, you just lied. You know, I'm not advocating that every time somebody wants something, you give it to them. But I am saying be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Because it, in that avoidance, in that moment, and I know it can be a little difficult... But I just want you to realize that we then turn that in the way that we deal with God. The Holy Spirit's trying to speak to us, and we're kind of, uh, yeah, I, I, I got it, I got it. I went to church last week. I gave a little something then. I'll just leave that there. Let me tell you what, what John said in 1 John 3, verse 14 and following. He said, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren, he that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Look at, look at how he relates these two. And ye know that no murderer shall uh, have eternal life uh, abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God because we lay, he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. For whosoever hath this world's good and sees his brother in need and shut up his bowels of compassion how or rhetorically he's saying ain't no way does the love of God dwell in you my little children let us not love in word he's just like James neither in tongue but in deed he's saying true love is seen by your actions don't say God I love people God help me to love people God it's through your love I want to be led and I want to follow he's saying if you love people and if you share the love of God and as Christians we should as he loved us, he said, so should we love one another. And that love is an action. It's a demonstration. God so loved the world that he gave his son, Jesus Christ. We should so love God's creation that we give ourselves, we give of our finances, we give of our time, we give of our talent, we give of our abilities, we give of the things that we so cherish in our life. And we say, but God, you put a love in my life, and so I'm going to demonstrate that love by giving this, this out to others. Can you say amen? amen? Come on, give him praise. James is saying, and John speaks clearly to us, that vocation goes with vocabulary. Compassion goes beyond concern. It's doing something with this, something that we say and that we speak about. We put on our garments uh, uh, that, that represent us for the day whether it's uh, out in construction, we put on our construction boots and our, our metatarso shoes and so forth, or whether it's in the bank or whether it's uh, in the ministry or whatever it may be, or a manager of a restaurant, we should put on the garments every single day that represent Christianity, the garments of love, the garments of compassion, the garments of, of doing, the garments of being. It is simply called the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, faith, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, kindness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Every single day when we go out into the world, this is what should be seen and demonstrated in our life. Can you give him praise? <laughs> it's more than a shallow conviction. Verse 18, show me your faith without works and I'll show you my faith by my works. You know, people today say, well, we all have our convictions. Okay, I'm cool. We do. Now, the problem is when you say I don't have a conviction in that area, but the word of God speaks to that area differently. Now your convictions are superseded 
by the convictions of the Word of God. See, when it really gets down to it, I said this earlier, it doesn't matter what we think. It's ma it matters what He says in His Word about our life. You know, we, we, we use phrases like, I'll pray about it. Well, when you look at the Word, you realize you don't have to pray about loving people. Well, they did me wrong. I'm going I'm to pray about forgiving them. Hey, listen, I'm trying not to say the word. Listen, unintelligent person. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> Euphemism there, but you don't pray about forgiveness. You act on forgiveness. I see somebody in need. Well, let me, let me just pray and, and talk to my spouse and see. What, no, 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 no. There's a legitimate need. You need to legitimately do something. Amen. I know not everyone is in need, but when there's a legitimate need, you need to do something. We have some legitimate needs today. We need to legitimately say yes to those needs. Amen. So there are things we don't have to pray about. We just act those things out in our life and out of our life. Faith is, a visib is, is visible by the actions of what we do. It's a life and a lifestyle that lines up with the word of God in all that we do. And James says, hey, show me. Show me. You show me. Your, I'm going to show you my faith by what I do in my life. You know, one person said faith is like calories. You can't, you can't see them, but, but you can see the effects of calories. <laughs> Focus this way. Don't look at your neighbor. You know? I mean, it's, it's like the wind. You know, last Tuesday, the wind came in. Now, if I didn't have some trees and bushes back, out back, I wouldn't know. In fact, my brother-in-law said, man, the wind's blowing out there. And I said, Really? He said, go look out your back door. And I went out there. Man, the trees are bowed over. Some of my neighbors, their trees went all the way down to the ground. Now, I never seen the wind. Have you ever seen the wind? If you did, I want to talk to you a little bit. But I've seen the effects of the wind, amen. I've seen what it does. You see, we should see the effects of faith and what it does because it's more than a feeling. It's more than just talk. It is really something that happens out of our life. Notice what the scripture says in, in Galatians 5 and 6, that faith should be working through us in love. Wow. First Peter 2, 12, he said, by your good deeds or good works, you glorify God. See, everything we do that is in obedience relative to the word of God is a type of worship in our life. See, worship is not just something that we come to church and we lift our hands and say, oh, God is good. That's a part of it. But worship is every action and every deed that glorifies God. So when you give to the hurting, the hungry, and the downtrodden, the desperate, you are glorifying God. You are saying, God, I do this because not only you live in me, but I love you. God, I make these sacrifices out of worship and praise unto you. Matthew 5, 16, Jesus said, let your light so shine that others may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So when you go about doing good deeds, when you go about living out the lifestyle, it is an expression of praise that others will see and say, wow, praise God. Wow, I give glory to the Father. In fact, when you do something for somebody that is a little out of what maybe some would say the ordinary, make sure they know, don't bring thanks to me, don't tell people about me, but give glory and honor and praise unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can you say amen this morning? Hallelujah. Faith finds its proof in its results. You remember that statement? I think we still use it now and again. There's proof in a pudding. I'm not really, is it that bad? I'm not. <laughs> I've never been really sure what that is. I've used it a lot of times. Well, there's proof in the pudding. I mean, I guess it's a taste test type thing, you know. But when it's all said and done, the, the end determines the means. When you look at the end product, you can see then what that person and what that life is really all about. And so he's saying, look, if you're a Christian, prove it. Let me see your actions. Back up your words. I didn't really grow up in church like in the everyday. I did go to church some and thank God for that. But even when I really got saved and started going with my wife, 
I would hear a few of these little songs. If you're saved, then you know it. Say amen. If you're saved, then you know it. Say amen. If you're saved, then you know it. Then you're. Uh, some of you. That isn't just a nursery rhyme and a children's song. That is to us today. Then your life will surely show it. If you're saved and you know it, say amen. amen. If you're saved and you know it, say amen. amen. If you're saved and you know it, say amen. amen. If you're saved and you know it, then your life. If you're saved and you know it, say amen. amen. Hey, man. I'm the choir director. Whoa. Hey, but isn't that the truth? You know, I've told you many times, if you don't go out of here living like a Christian, then don't tell them you go to Sanctuary Church. Tell them you go to Conway Baptist or something. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> you know. Well, here's another one. What you see is what you get. You know, that's an old, I don't care what you think. I'm telling you, here's the real question. What can I see in my life or can others see in my life that proves what I say? What I say is what you should see, and that's what you should get. Not what you see is what you get. It's what I say and what I live and what I do should be what you see in the everyday of my life. i got to wind this thing down. It's more than a simple conversation. It is, we we're just talking about it. Uh, verse 19, thou believest that there is one God, you do well. The devils believe too. <laughs> what does it really matter? Believe beyond words. And I'll begin to close down with this. What are you doing and what are we doing about our believing and what we're saying? That word believe is an interesting word, pistuo. And it means to trust in, to cling to, to rely on, to commit to it, it, yourself completely and to put total confidence and be fully, fully persuaded in God. Now, fully persuaded is to the degree that you have changed your actions, your deeds, your thoughts, your attitudes, your habits, everything that you are believing is a conviction based on the testimony that something or someone has spoken truth into your life and that it's 100% reliable. It is a verb in verb form in a present participle that simply means it is active, it is ongoing, and it is continual. He's saying, so you believe you do something you not only do it once, but you do it twice, but you do it every single day of your life. It is an ongoing commitment that when you believe, you are doing. James said, faith without works in verse 17, James 2, is dead. He said, when you believe, there should be something that you do. How many believers do we have this morning? Amen. There should be something that we're doing and we're basing that belief on. When you look through Scripture, whether it's Abraham in, in uh, Romans 4 and 3, who he believed God. And it was a credit to him for righteousness' sake. But what did he do when he believed God? He got up and followed. That wherever God led, that's where Abraham went in his life. Romans 4, 20, 21. He was fully persuaded that God was able to perform that which he had promised in his life. So he did something on that belief throughout the Bible again and again. People believe and they do something. Something more than just speaking that belief. It ultimately becomes a yes with a confidence and a conviction that changes our life. church is more than a feeling I love feeling things I love coming to church I love getting excited I love being the church I love being responsible to what Paul said follow me as I follow Christ follow my life and you'll see his lordship is what Paul is saying you'll see the leadership of the Holy Spirit that's what we should aim for every single day in our life Lord it's a big yes in my life this is what I want to do I want to give you, and then they're going to sing a song. We're going to share some things in conclusion. I want to give you some of the things that you've been saying yes to in this church. 
This past year of our global and local outreach departments, the church has flourished, the church has grown, and we've done more than any other single year that I can remember. In 2018, we gave 180,000 pounds of food to nearly 28,000 family members and 8,000 families. Can you say amen to the big yes? We've implemented prayer teams in our food pantry that people are being prayed for and ministered to on a regular basis. 210 Operation Christmas gifts, the child box or the boxes, the shoe boxes you gave in 2018. 54 children were blessed through our angel tree. Heart of Florida Youth Ranch, we've partnered with them and we've done more than we've ever done. We've partnered with Harbor House. It is a, a place where battered women can go and we've ministered in, in those areas. Up Orlando uh, in, in their Christmas store, assisting needy families. Prison ministry, Bridges of America. Nearly 560 men have attended the uh, services whereby 51 men in prison came and gave their life to Jesus Christ. Amen. These are, these are good things. Acts of Love, Uganda, Conway Learning Center collected 400 pairs of shoes. So it's not only here, but our daycares are, are doing things, serving the pantry. And we went to Barber Park and served the people. Uh, an overwhelming amount of clothes and hygiene products were sent just last month to the Haiti Project to help families in Haiti. Our sister church, um, Satellite Church in downtown Orlando went, they took just, I mean, a, a whole van load of clothes and goods. Globally, we are currently supporting seven uh, missionaries and mission projects. Out of those, we have from Ecuador to Colombia to, to Belgium and around the world. We have uh, helped in rebuilding churches after the hurricane. These are all yeses that you've given. We've rebuilt the Immokalee Church with Pastor Joseph and, and his house. He went from a house that was devastated by the hurricane that was completely wiped out. And we led teams and you gave and you worked and you served and gave finances whereby we completely rebuilt their house, new roof, new interior. They have air conditioning for the first time ever at that, church, at that house after living there for nine years with no AC. They have a brand new interior, brand new kitchen, bathrooms. We added a new bedroom because they have like nine kids, seven, seven kids. And uh, we, we added a new room there, redid the whole house. How did that happen? Because you said yes. And because you demonstrated faith that it's more than a feeling because you were willing to get involved and do something. She gave, Pastor Joy gave the number of 137,000. Actually, when you add benevolence to that, last year the church gave $150,000 out from the church and I would estimate even more in services and ministry that you helped and made a difference in people around the world can you say amen, amen. come on give him praise and glory amen
moment out to share with you my testimony. You see, it's actually funny because I really shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be the one you see. I shouldn't be the voice that you hear. I almost killed myself. Suicide is what I came near until I heard a voice inside my head that told me to have no fear. You will lead a generation. Put the knife down. I'm right here. It was right then that my life changed beyond what I could expect. I was a broken kid with no hope. Couldn't believe what would come next. Similar to Moses, I felt unqualified, but I simply had to obey and say yes. In our hearts, and it carries through eternity. Simple obedience, it changes history. to all of you who have said yes but they're not the only ones I want to say thank you to you that you don't only come to this church you are this church and you go out every day every week and you sacrifice and you give and I just want to say thank you from the depths of my heart in, in representing the love and the spirit of God thank you for what you do and may God abundantly bless you in every way can you give yourself a hand as well And I want to say thank you to 
our missionaries who they could serve in a comfortable place right here in the United States but they go around the world and if they're not around the world their voice is going around the world and they're making sacrifices and they're surrendering themselves for the kingdom of God to make a difference thank you for saying yes we bless you and we praise God amen for what you're doing amen I want you to be seated you guys stay here just be seated for just a minute so what do we do it's an emotional moment it's more than a feeling though it's I mean I feel something right now my heart is moved as I watch these come up people that I know and love and see all of the time and, and all of a sudden flip that over you know I, all of a sudden the reality is I work 70 hours a week but I'm still yes I'm still serving God I'm retired hey it's time to just kick back turn on old shows she's serving God I've got seven kids not me for sure I got I got seven excuses did not excuse your report but I said yes I'm a single mom who has come a tremendous and a wonderful road and path here at Sanctuary Church and is working and involved in ministry every single week. I'm, I'm nobody, I'm just a teenager. You know, that's what David was, right? But I said, I said, yes, I, I've got every excuse, man. I, I struggle and I need a little help in my balance coming up. But I said, yes. So what about you? What about us? Thank you for last year, but it's a brand new year. We start today in our missions year. And I'm asking you, let it be more than a feeling. Let it be a, an absolute unequivocal yes that says, God, I'm going to start praying first and foremost. I'm going to pray for our missionaries. I'm going to pray for those that are involved. But I'm going to pray and I'm going to say, God, what do you want me to do? How can I help? How can I make a difference? I'm going to seek your face. And I'm going to seek your favor and I'm going to surrender and I'm going to say God I want to do whatever you want me to do and then I'm going to serve and in that surrender and in that serve I'm going to give and I'm going to make a difference how many will say I'll, I'll start I'll start praying that way come on I want to see your hand all of this I'm going to start praying come on just hold it up I want to bless you just hold it up I want you to just if you could lift the other hand right next to it and I want to bless you right now father in the name of Jesus God, I thank you for every single one right now as they lift their hands up that they are saying, yes, I don't, I don't know what I can do. I don't know what we can do. But God, I know that when we say yes, it's more than a feeling. God, there's an experiential level that we're giving ourselves and we're seeking and we're saying, God, show us your will. Show us your way. What do you want us to do? How can we use our gifts and talents? Lord, I might I can go around the world, but what if you call me? God, I want to hear that. I want to know that. I want to go where you say go and I want to be what you say be and I want to do what you say do but God let me see my mission field right around me every day let me make an impact and a difference God to my community to my co-workers father to my family who desperately needs a missionary in their life let it be me father and God we pray for those that are sent as we send them to do this work around the world in Jesus name we pray amen and amen I bless you hallelujah give God praise Now we want to see if your yes is a real yes. <laughs> Take this card. It's in the seat back in front of you. If you give it all to Sanctuary Church, there's a part of your giving always is involved in missions. Sanctuary Church is a, is a unique church, not the only one, but it's a unique church. And that our budget begins before we start anything we're already scheduling and really when you look at more there's hundreds of thousands of dollars that are already being budgeted to go out from around the corner to around the world to make a difference in people's lives let me tell you about your your elders and leaders in this church I just just had a meeting last week with my administrative council and I said I, I need um, I need another twenty five thousand dollars because there are special projects around the around the globe and, and right here in Orlando and and uh, in the United States that I want to help I, it, it is a goal of mine that if there's any legitimate need and somebody comes we're trying to help that a little bit 
if not a lot. We're trying to make a difference in areas. I have the overseer of New Mexico. Uh, uh, we, my wife and I went through MIP with he and his wife back in 1987. He called me right after General Assembly uh, about a year ago, and he said, uh, I'm the new overseer of New Mexico. Um, John, can you help start a church? So we're going to help start that church in New Mexico. We've got some other needs. I've got a, you remember Edwin Lipsy who came here and, and preached my pastor appreciation? He's, he's got a 180 drug center. They had a chance to buy a house to put him in. They're doing tremendous work. He talked to me and said, hey, John, can you help at all? I said, absolutely. I commit $10,000. I said, I got to go ask our people now, but I'm sure it's going to be all right. I asked and talked to the elders the other day. They said, absolutely, pastor. We want to help. We want to make a difference. Go ahead and do what is on your heart. So Sanctuary Church is doing and giving and being and, and throughout the year trying to make an impact and a difference. But I need you to be a bigger part of that. So if you'll just look at this card and you say, I don't, I don't have any money. That's what faith is. Faith is simply saying, God, I'm going to mark something on what I would want to do if it was available. What I would want to do if you moved on the situation. Amen. What if... If you stepped out of the boat, God, I believe you're going to make the water firm for me to walk on. Is that all right? And I'd like for you to take, take a moment, fill that card out, and put, put a pledge in there, your pledge, whatever God's leading you to do. Whether it's a one-time offering, we're going to receive the offering in just a minute, or whether it's a monthly gift or whatever it may be, whatever God is leading you to do. I'm asking God to help my wife and I to give the most we've ever given in a single year, starting today in our missions giving, the most we've ever given in a single year. I'm not going to tell you what that, that number is, but I can tell you it's a challenge for us, just like you. But I'm telling you, if you don't let the Holy Spirit help you and challenge you, you'll never go beyond where you're at right now. You have to have more than a feeling. You have to have a faith that operates and says, this is what I'm going to do with my faith. This is how I'm going to step out. This is the difference that I'm going to make in the name of Jesus Christ. Does that make sense? Amen. Would you take that and fill that out? Just real quick. And I want us to lay hands on that. You may fill it out. Some of you may fill it out later, turn it in next week. I get that. I want us to lay hands on it right now and pray over it. Then I want us to pray as well about giving an offering, a one-time offering today. Maybe a check. Maybe text to give. I don't know how you give. Give online. But it goes to fruitful soil to make an impact. I'm going to tell you one of the great reasons Sanctuary Church is blessed because Sanctuary Church is a giving church, a church that sacrifices and makes a difference, and it's more than a feeling for us. Would you lay your hands on that card right now, even if you haven't filled it out yet? Would you pray with me? Take your offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the privilege, God, of experiencing Christ every day in our life. Thank you, God, for the conviction, the leadership, the Holy Spirit, that in that experience it becomes an expression in how we live our life. Now help us to go out and do that. But as well, Father, we pray over this gift, this offering, this opportunity, Father, to give today, to give into the future, Father, to let our yes be something that makes an impact. God, something that challenges us, something, God, that, that, that moves upon us to go beyond what we've ever done. I pray today and I just bless your people as they give and as they give faithfully and sacrificially in the name of Jesus. Let it be used for your glory. Let it redound his blessings back into the life of every single giver. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you believe that, would you give God praise, honor, and glory? Hallelujah. Our ushers are going to come at this time. And I want them just, just before you, before you, before you come up, let me ask this one question. The most important question, the most important thing that I can do today. Is there anybody here today that you've come and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Or maybe you've made a profession at one time, but you've not been living the life. It's been a feeling, but it's not been a real relationship. And you want to come back to that place in faith and say, Christ, restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Renew in me a right mind in Jesus' name. If that's you this morning, would you just slip your hand up? I'd like to pray for you today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Can I pray with you? Would you, would you just meet me right? Sanctuary family. If there's any others. Are you here? What's your name? Dale. Dale? Are you from Orlando? Yes. Well, I'm here. I've been here a long time. 
<laughs> Listen, thank you for your service. But thank you for what God's doing right now in your life, Dale. Is this your first time here? Yes, sir. Have you, is, it a, is it a moment of restoration that you're asking God or for first time to receive Christ as your, in your restoration. life? Restoration. God is a God of restoration. When God restores, God never brings us back to where we were. He always takes us beyond where we've ever been. So this morning, Dale, when we pray, it is my prayer that God will take you beyond anything you've ever experienced in your faith and in your walk. Do a restorative act whereby that God will continue to take you to places that you've never experienced in your life to give you that strength to live again. Is that all right? Amen. Church, would you help me pray? Dale, let's pray together. Father, thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you for never giving up on me and loving me, bringing me to this moment that you're going to restore my life. Today, I cry unto you in repentance. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your love. Give me the peace that I so desperately need. Today, I'm free because Jesus makes me free. Today, I will go forward victoriously in the power of the Spirit and Word. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father, for the work that you're doing in my life today and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Listen, I want you to... Is there church Wednesday? It, we're having a big celebration Wednesday. It'll be church, but we'll have... You, it's going to be weird because we're going to have ice cream. We're going to have fellowship, and we're going to have some songs, but, but we'll be there. Mark, would you come here right now? This is one of my elders, and I want you to meet Mark. He's going to talk with you a little bit more and pray with you. Mark's a good guy. You can trust him, I think. No, you can. Amen. Isn't that awesome, church? To God be the glory. All right, ushers, if you would come, come now. And the ushers are going to give you an opportunity to give. Listen, it's not just your giving, it's your getting involved as well. It's your praying, it's your seeing, it's your seeking. In the name of Jesus, God bless you in your gift and giving this morning. Ushers, go ahead. They're going to begin to sing again one more time. As they sing, would you give? And as they come by and once the offerings come, you are dismissed. Let's have a wonderful day. Go out and meet our missionaries. Go by their booths. Check it out. Tell them you appreciate what they're doing. Get a card from them so you can pray over them constantly in Jesus' name. Love you. God bless.